Hello and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide, where today we're here at SeaWorld Orlando to come and ride Pipeline the Surf Coaster. I am so excited for this. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this rides. I love the train design, so I can't wait to see it. Now this is a new generation B&M stand-up coaster, uh, with it actually being the world's first surf coaster. We're going to be standing up on a surfboard as we go around throughout this ride. It's launched with a top speed of 60 miles an hour, and it also features one inversion, the court screw that you can see there just behind behind us as well. It opened earlier this year and I'm really looking forward to getting on this. I love B&M coasters, I do enjoy stand-ups as well and I'm hoping with this, it's kind of a new generation stand-up, that it's going to ride really good. Yeah, because sometimes I do find stand-up coasters really uncomfortable so I'm hoping that this one won't be too bad. I think that's the thing, that's why B&M have wanted to kind of try and refine their train design um, from a lot of their older B&M stand-up coasters. And don't get me wrong, there's some great stand-ups out there uh, but it can be uncomfortable and sometimes as well, it's the effort that you've got to go into to get onto the train and also uh, the restraints and just standing up of course back in the UK we've got Shockwave which is changing actually it won't be a stand up next year uh, but that was actually built by Intamin uh, but still it's a faff to get onto it isn't is it? It is just so hard to get on and off. Yeah and with this you kind of step straight onto the train I believe uh, the vest pulled down and of course it should be nice and easy but uh, yeah I'm really excited to give it a go come and join us as we ride Pipeline for the first time and of course as we're here at SeaWorld we'll be able to take you on with some on-ride POVs. Now firstly, I just wanted to talk about the location for this ride. It's right down here by the entrance to the park. And I've got to say, it looks gorgeous from off-ride. Look at this with the water right in front of it. Love the track color on here as well. And it just looks so nice in this location. It's like this part of the park was always designed for a roller coaster over here. And yeah, I am a big fan of the look of it. And of course, you've got the launch just over there at the back and this huge overbank at the start of the ride. And yeah, the theming around the area is quite minimal. However, it is nicely landscaped all around here and that will look better over time. Ignore the kind of circus theming here at the moment. That's for their Halloween events, Howl O' Scream. So yeah, this is obviously one of the scare zones just down here. But you got your kind of surfer vibe going on around here. This is all nicely done, all painted up. And of course, yeah, the end of the launch just down here. I love how it's got a little airtime hill on there. That looks fantastic. Kind of reminds me of like Ride to Happiness uh, kind of style. And I just want to say it's great to see B&M actually trying new things now. These past few years, we've really seen B&M kind of step out of their old ways of doing fantastic rides, but never really experimenting. And now going for something completely different, um, like doing some more family coaches, which we've seen. And of course, reinventing the stand-up just here with Pipeline. But yeah, let's get a nice shot of it coming down the launch, launch here. But yeah, I do really like the location for this. It looks lovely off-ride. It's looking good there from off-ride and very excited to experience it. Here's a look at the logo for Pipeline the Surf Coaster. Nice and vibrant and of course fits with the overall theme, this kind of beachfront surfing vibe, which I do really like. You don't quite ride it like here though up there. Of course, you are facing forwards on this, not on a side. And yeah, what I do like though is how they had two across instead of four, because yeah, if it was four across, it wouldn't have really looked um, like you were surfing. So I do like how they've gone um, for two across with this one. Of course, the entrance to the queue lines over here. It's always worth pointing out when you come to the SeaWorld parks and resorts uh, that you do need to pay for lockers if you've got a large bag. So anything bigger than like a bum bag, a fanny pack, um, then yeah, you do need a locker. And yeah, the entrance just over here. Look at this though, it looks the part. There's the one inversion on the right, the corkscrew. And yeah, looking forward to giving this a go, Charlotte. Really looking forward to this. This looks fantastic off-ride, so I'm looking forward to seeing how it rides. The launch looks really good with the airtime, Elle. Yes, 
forward to it. Let's go and make our way into the queue line. Of course, we're going to be able to take you on board. We'll do a front-facing POV on the front row, and then, of course, we'll get further down near the back. And, yeah, we'll do a rider cam POV for you all. And here we are then in the station, ready for our first ever ride on Pipeline. I'm really excited to see how this is going to ride. Yeah, here's a look at the train design. Of course, looks just like a surfboard with it being the surf coaster. And yeah, I do love how there's no kind of sides on the train. You've not got to step over anything. Literally just onto the surfboard platform, straight in, which is fantastic. And yeah, as you can see, it's also got the vest restraints on there. Something that B&M have started rolling out on quite a lot of their coasters, like the flying coasters, uh, wing coasters. And yeah, of course, now with this here on the surf. And I've got to say, the trains look really comfortable. So I'm excited to see how this is going to ride. And of course, you can come and join us for our first ever ride here on the front row of Pipeline. train awaits let's go and see how this ride very excited for this most anticipated ride of this trip hey here we go i tell you what it was nice and easy to step into the train love not having the sides on there and yeah of course with other stand-up coasters like they're really quite bulky to climb into with this it was so easy I'm just really excited to see how this is going to ride. And of course, you can kind of bounce up and down a little bit as well with this one. You ready, Charlotte? Yeah. <laughs> Let's launch. Oh, wow. Woo. Oh, <laughs> Woo. oh wow. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Oh, wow. Woo. <laughs> How the sea bounces up and down. Woo! <laughs> Very smooth. Woo! Nice and comfortable. Woo! Woo! Oh, oh there we go. Into the brake run. First ever ride there on Pipeline. That was a really interesting experience it was very smooth very comfortable initial ride it was quite forceless i found going around some of the elements there however i loved the airtime hill on the lawn so let's go straight back round and get further back on the train So we've made our way now straight down here to the back. Yeah, we're in about 15 minutes. And yeah, of course, we're on row 12 now. 24 riders per train here on Pipeline with the two trains. Looking forward to seeing how it is down the back. Of course, coasts are traditionally more forceful. Get more pull down here at the back. I do love the train design though. I think that does look fantastic. Let's see how she rides down here in row 12. Pipeline the surf coaster. We're down here then at the back of Pipeline. Yeah. 
Into the brake run just there. I'll tell you what, it was certainly more whippy down there at the back. Just got a bit of a rattle at the back there. Yeah, just rattled a little bit, but uh, yeah, not uncomfortable, but yeah, just rattled a little bit. I'll tell you what though, I definitely enjoy it more down here at the definitely back. Definitely more better at the back. Yeah, 100%. But uh, yeah, some good uh, forces on there in places. The launch, I think it's definitely the highlight of the ride for me, especially the airtime hill on there. And down at the back, you really get a nice uh, pop of airtime and whipped up. And there's some other surprising bits of airtime uh, around the layout on there as well. just had two rides there on Pipeline the Surf Coaster, one at the front and one at the back. And of course, let's talk about our full review for this new ride here at SeaWorld Orlando. So yes, in terms of the area itself, I think it looks fantastic, especially with all the landscaping and also its location by the water as well. I think it's very subtle theming. They could have done with having a little bit more around the area, but what they have done with the sand, and it is quite colorful around the area. I think that's the thing with it having the lake and all the trees, it looks really pretty. And also you've got the water splash um, off ride there as well, which makes it look really nice. But yeah, overall, it's not particularly themed around there, uh, but it does look the past and I think with it being the surf coaster and the fact it goes over water um, is really nice. Something that I'm a bit disappointed about is the queue line and station. Uh, there's no theming really at all. Uh, a couple of surfboards which is just the signs and then like a vinyl wall. The station and all that looks very basic doesn't it? It is very basic in there. They could have done with like having some surfboards hanging up or something in there. Yeah just anything even like some ropes and that sort of thing to make it look a bit less kind of concrete and steel like it does at the moment. I know SeaWorld and Busch Gardens aren't really uh, up on massive theming now with their rise we've seen that with like icebreaker and iron Gwazi, but still i think the presentation could have been a lot better there with the station yeah it just looks so bare in there especially when you look at some of the older parts of the park like manta for example uh, and even mako to an extent you know there's a lot more theming to look at and not really with pipeline the surf coaster uh, but still of course then let's talk about the trains you step um, through the air gates onto one of two trains 24 riders per train and yeah from a capacity point of view it should do pretty well i mean really today uh, from what we're seeing it's taking time to get the train sent out um, but still I do understand that you know you're not gonna get them as quick as a sit-down coaster uh, because it's stand-up but still there's no seat belts or anything on this one it's just the over-the-shoulder restraint um, so I don't really know why it's taking quite so long to load up I have no idea but it is nice and easy to get onto the train which is much better what makes it better is not having like any sides to step over um, also along with that as well I'm sure a lot of our viewers here uh, back in the UK have experienced shockwave at Drayton Manor and I know that's intimate but I'm gonna compare it uh, because there is some similarities to that and other BM stand-ups uh, and of course for those of you that have seen others around the US and around the world you'll know what I mean by uh, there's a little area in the middle where you have to kind of step over um, this isn't the case with this uh, you kind of just uh, lower it down yourself sit back and then pull the restraint down so it's much easier much more comfortable with that isn't it so much easier than having to tread over loads of different people to get on yeah and I do like how it's not got a seat belt as well no faffing around even though it does seem to be taking a while to get the trains out uh, today from what we've seen uh, but still I do really like the train design I think mean, the surfboard looks fantastic. I found them very comfortable as well with the vest restraint. Uh, worth pointing out, the vests don't actually um, lock, so to speak, throughout the ride. So you don't kind of, uh, it doesn't get tighter throughout the ride. However, they're not really loose either. But you do find with these newer um, coasters with the vest, um, over a period of time, they won't feel quite as tight on the shoulders. I did find the vest quite tight, but like Sean said, they don't lock, so at least you can move forward. Yeah, which is a good thing. And then, of course, you move on to the ride experience itself. Highlight of the ride straight away has got to be that launch. Zero to 60 mile an hour LSM launch. Uh, and of course, with it being the little airtime hill there, great to see b &M innovating and trying different things, isn't it? Oh, it is. The launch is great on there. I like how you're moving up and down on your seat as you go round. And that's the thing with this, unlike other stand-up coasters that actually lock, like once you go, you've dispatched, you're locked in that position. With this one, it's kind of like this. You're bouncing up and down on there, which is good fun. Uh, and I did like that. But yeah, of course, you make your way then straight into that overbank, um, which was really nice. A uh, way to kind of slow the train down before dropping down again into that water splash element. And of course, up into the one inversion on the ride, which was the corkscrew. I don't think the corkscrew itself rode amazing, but it was better in the back because you got some whip. Yeah, at least you got the little bit of the whip at the back. But like Sean said, it doesn't ride amazingly, the inversion. Yeah, and then you make your way out of that area into a couple of helixes, some more drops and turns. That, for me, it 
after the inversion is where I found the layout to be quite weak. Uh, it was better in the back because there was some nice transitions. And of course, you do get some good bits of airtime as well, kind of, because uh, you're going up and down, as you're going into the drops, especially at the back of the train, you did get some nice pops of air. But what I did notice, I don't know if you did, Charlotte, but um, the seat, with it bouncing up and down, you could tell it was kind of hitting the metal plate at the bottom, which I found not uncomfortable, but more annoying, if anything. Let's talk about this on the brake one, because I couldn't feel it. I just felt a bit of the rattle on the back. I was hoping for it to be a bit more <laughs> springy, if that makes sense. Off-ride, it looks quite springy, but when you're on it, actually, it, you can kind of hit, it, it hits the metal you underneath, know what you know. You're talking about, yeah. um, obviously, I was expecting to be more, more cud cushioned there, you know, so it was a bit more smooth with the bouncing. You like how we're doing all this? You've got to try and brace yourself with your feet, haven't you? Yeah, you have, but of course, in, in the airtime, you kind of feels like you're floating it in does. a way, um, going through some of the elements. Uh, and then, of course, yeah, the helixes were good, not that forceful, and then you're down into the break room. But um, I think for me, I'm slightly disappointed by it. I was hoping to enjoy it a lot more. I've ridden much better stand up coasters. I prefer pretty much all the stand-up coasters that I've done, including Shockwave actually, which is really surprising. I know that's not gonna be a stand-up for much longer back at Drayton Manor in the UK. Um, but I think for me, I like something that's a bit more forceful, a bit more aggressive. And I understand that's probably not what they wanted in this park. Uh, but for me personally, uh, I just wish it had a bit more force. I think for me, I think it's a super fun ride. But like Sean said, there is better stand-ups out there. And I wish the layout had been a little bit better. Yeah, I think after that court screw, it does lose it quite a bit. Lose the momentum that much so it's going quite slow. So still in my warm-up layer in the day, we'll give it a go later. We're going to do the rest of the part. That vlog will be coming up tomorrow and we'll uh, go and yeah, get on some more rides and come back later to Pipeline. But overall, it feels more family thrill than full-on thrill. I was hoping for it to be a bit more like whippy and side to side, um, but still it is a newer ride. Normally B&Ms do take a while to bed in as well. So there we go, that's my initial thoughts. Some nice bits of airtime. The launch was the highlight for me. Oh, the launch was so good on there. And it was very comfortable to ride as well, which is good. You know, it's not rough. Um, it's not hard to get onto the train. It's a nice addition to this park, but for me, there's way better stand-ups out there and there's much better coasters in the rest of this park. While we're back down here now at Pipeline, the surf coaster, it's been open for about six hours now. So yeah, hopefully it'll have warmed up even better from earlier on. I'm looking forward to having another ride. So we're gonna get some more off-ride footage for you this time, showing you it here at SeaWorld Orlando. And it does look beautiful off-ride here, it really does. waited five minutes then for another ride on Pipeline the Surf Coaster and yeah before we share our final thoughts on that ride and how it's warmed up just thought I'd show you the merchandise here in the gift shop I've got to say I think this print over here is absolutely fantastic I remember when they first released this concept art thinking I'm really looking forward to seeing that bit of a game changer for B&M and stand-up coasters and yeah I think that print is really nice just there and of course limited edition down there with a the number in the bottom as well He's very nice, he's got like a collectible coin just over there too. Well, I just thought I'd have a look at the pricing on the back, $120 plus tax and then the 5%. Yeah, I'm all right, I won't be paying that. But yeah, I do like the prints. Of course, you've got some caps just here as well. Got a price on these anywhere, have we? Doesn't look like it. Are they priced? Oh, it's on the top. $32.99. There we go. 
and you have mentioned this at Ambush Gardens vlog and also um, of course every SeaWorld and Parks and Resort we go to we, you do get a 5% surcharge for increased operating costs now Why crazy the price to the existing <laughs> stuff? I don't know Charlotte and then of course you've got the logo I love the branding 32 99 not too bad for a t-shirt and you got a few other ones just here the salty crew just over here do you want to be part of the salty crew Charlotte? No. <laughs> <laughs> you got some of the smaller bits over here as well they're quite nice Oh, we got this there. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, there sea you go, a little rescue. Sea World Rescue kit. And they got a little ambulance. I thought it was Barbie at first, didn't yeah. they? Well, we just come out of the gift shop, and yeah, there's some nice things in there, but some of the price is a little bit high for some of the stuff. However, I guess that plaque um, is limited edition. Um, but yeah, of course, we had another ride on the front row of Pipeline. We thought we'd do it on the front again, same as our first ride. How did you find it? I find that there was quite a bad rattle on the front this time, and also, when Sean mentioned earlier, when you're going up and down, I can feel it like slamming down. Yeah, you can feel it slamming kind of onto the metal. I thought it would have been like padded, if that made sense. It's not uncomfortable, but I certainly noticed a rattle. It does make me concerned a little bit how this is going to age in a few years time. Yeah, that's the thing, it's so brand new at the moment, how is it going to be in like two, three years time? Yeah, that's the thing with these codes, it's all about how they age. I mean, normally B&M's, you get the build quality and they last a long time. However, as we've already seen with the Manjo Mayhem back at Chestington in the UK, that's got quite a rattle and this has got a similar rattle to that, hasn't yeah, so it? so it's interesting to see that is. Yeah, it's not like uncomfortable or rough or anything like that, but it is just a rattle, a little bit of shaking side to side, which isn't a problem now, but in the future um, it could be. But yeah, it's been really nice getting down here for Pipeline. Of course, always be honest in these videos. I am leaving a little bit disappointed with this one. I was expecting a little bit more from it. I thought it was going to be quite a game changer for B&M stand-ups. I thought, oh, these are going to be flying off the shelves. They're really unique. They're very different. Parts could theme them to all sorts. But in my opinion, uh, there's much better coaster models out there um, from B&M and other manufacturers. It's one of those that I've enjoyed getting on it. But next time I come here to this park, I'll probably just do it once, to be honest. I think for me, it is a super fun ride, but it's just not a standout for me at all. No, I think when you've got a park like this, what's already got lots of fantastic coasters as well. Um, I much prefer most of the other coasters in this park um, over Pipeline. However, it's been nice to do it, and it really does look the park from off ride, especially here. Wow, look at that. Yeah, I'm really glad it's kind of filled the void around here. It's not replaced any rides in this area or anything like that. It's a completely new addition uh, in this part of the park that really was only open for seasonal events. So overall, I think it's been a nice addition to this park. It's not brilliant, uh, but it's not poor. It's just a kind of average ride, uh, but it's good fun. You feel like you're floating. Uh, and yeah, it's something a little bit different that the park have put in down here. Oh, uh, but thanks for joining us Thank for you. our review from Pipeline. Of course, we're going to be having a full park vlog as well, getting on all of the other rides with plenty of POVs here from SeaWorld. And that'll be coming up tomorrow here on the channel. It's baking hot today though, so it's going to be a hot one, Charlotte. Oh, it's so hot. Hey, well, that leaves us with one final thing to say. Get out there and keep, keep on, on riding. riding. See you tomorrow.